Here's Brody Brazil. So if you're like me, you love baseball. And you also understand and respect the importance of math in our game, right? Because without numbers, how would you understand statistics or performance or even predictions or projections sometimes? Math has a very important place in sports and in baseball. It's also got a very important place here in helping us understand A's Vegas math, as in Oakland potentially relocating to Southern Nevada. Numbers are going to help us see some bigger picture perspectives here with this situation. And for the sake of this video, we'll break it down in three different ways. Number one, ballpark financing. Number two, ballpark construction. And eventually, number three, team roster construction as in trying to see how a first 10 years, a first decade of A's baseball might look from a cost perspective in Southern Nevada. So let's begin with ballpark construction and what the A's are essentially promising. Now, we haven't seen renderings yet. All of this is simply textual, but approximately a 30,000-seat stadium with a retractable roof, like it needs to have that, sometimes for it to be open when the weather is nice enough, but obviously June, July, August, September, you need that roof shut, you need the air conditioning kicking inside that facility. But all of that fitting on a nine-acre site of the current Tropicana Hotel. We will discuss construction separately. This is just to help you understand the cost of this. The A's are saying right now, here in May of 2023, this is a $1.5 billion expense. Now, a lot of us have done a construction project before. We know the number we start with is not exactly the number we finish at. So let's just say, you know, for the sake of this video and initial ideas or figures, $1.5 billion is where we're going to start here. Again, even other projects in Las Vegas and around the country, whether it's a ballpark, a hotel, a house, a remodel, whatever it is, everything in construction costs a little bit more by the time you're done with it. But understand $1.5 billion is what they're committing to from the get-go. Now, here's what the A's are getting in return as it relates to incentives to come to Las Vegas. And not all of this is squared away, but we will give you some figurative ballpark numbers. A waived MLB relocation fee. The commissioner, Rob Manfred, Manfred, has said that the A's will not be subject to this, what every other team has been, and that is a $500 million relocation fee. The A's are also getting their land, their plot of land, nine acres, for free from the Bally's Corporation and from GLPI. That's the Gaming and Leisure Properties Incorporated. They're asking for $395 million of public money between the state of Nevada and Clark County, and they're also getting $175 million from GLPI as an incentive to build here. So add all these numbers up, $500 million, $180 million, $395 million, and $175 million. That gets you to a $1.25 billion value of things you're getting for moving to, ne to Nevada, to Southern Nevada, to get this stadium built that might cost $1.5 billion or more, you're getting $1.25 billion of value. I say instantly, but all of this stuff would, would probably pay out over time. Now, this is important to realize and understand what the A's are getting in value here because later on, you'll see that if they want to compete with the average MLB payroll year after year, that's also going to cost them a lot more than they're currently spending right now. They spend the lowest in the league. That's well documented. But I'll show you how much they actually need to save here to potentially pay for the team that they want down the road. So they're promising a $1.5 billion stadium. But let's be clear, to put all these numbers together, because I don't know that these are all always seen in the same place at the same time, they're getting a $1.25 billion value to start construction. Now, speaking of construction, let's get into the actual stadium itself. We said it's going to sit on nine acres at the site of the Tropicana Hotel. They will eventually start to build this, then tear down the Tropicana, then build up a new Bally's property there. Uh, they say it's going to have 30,000 seats. And the A's are saying specifically this is going to be smaller than Allegiant Stadium, but much bigger than T-Mobile Arena. They want it to kind of fit that middle ground between two 
existing venues, which are only several blocks away. But at nine acres and 30,000 seats for Major League Baseball, 81 times a year, that would be the smallest retractable roof footprint across any MLB site by at least three acres. And I'll show you every single retractable roof stadium in just a second. Like, we will go into that detail. But understand, no other ballpark across the country with a retractable roof, and there are seven of them, none of these other ones fit on nine acres like the A's are planning on. Also this, no other big league stadium would have only 30,000 seats. In fact, the next closest to 30,000 is Cleveland, and that one sits at about 34, almost 35,000 capacity. So this would be unprecedented in the smallest footprint for a retractable roof stadium and the smallest capacity by a pretty large amount, by about 5,000. So let's go across all the stadium sites here after we first understand the Tropicana Hotel site. Nine acres on the southeast corner of this square-shaped property. And you can see from Google Earth right there, that yellow outline, that that yellow square is nine acres. Now, it could be more of a rectangle. It could have a different shape. But just for the sake of our understanding what nine acres look like, uh, this is nine acres on about a 35, 36 acre property. So that is where the ballpark would go. You see the site currently of the Tropicana Hotel. I, I believe they've said three different towers would go up for a brand new Bally's branded property. Okay, let's look through the other seven retractable roof stadiums right now in baseball. There's eight total domes, if you will. The eighth is Tropicana Field, home of the Rays. That one does not open and close. It is the only fixed dome left. These are all roofs, roofs, roofs that open and shut. Okay, in Seattle, T-Mobile Park, like huge attendance. It seats 48,000 almost, but it sits on 15.3 acres. Clearly, 15.3, a lot more than nine. How about Rogers Center? This is actually one of the smaller footprints for a retractable roof. This went up in the late 80s. It only takes 12 acres and seats 41,500. Now, I want you to pay attention here to the attendance figures because that's important, right? How big of a ballpark are you building seat-wise, capacity-wise versus how much land are you taking? They've obviously been very efficient here in using 12 acres at Rogers Center. But again, 12 acres is significantly more than nine. If I'm doing my math correct here, it's like 33% more than the nine acre site in Las Vegas. How about Minute Maid Park, home of the world champion? Houston Astros, 41,000 seats on 13.77 acres. Again, these are retractable roof stadiums that need more land. You need more land to have a roof that opens and shuts to have it how you want it. 13.77 acres in Houston. How about Lone Depot Park? This one went up in Miami a little more than 10 years ago. Seats 36,000. So the capacity is actually down on this one, but the acreage is still at 13.78. And you see it's a unique shape. I really tried to outline it as best as possible to give you the most accurate, accurate footprint size. But 13.78 acres, significantly bigger than nine. If nine is all you get, like, you're not able to fit any of these stadiums on that plot of land. Globe Life Field opened in 2020, home of the Texas Rangers. 40,000 seats, 18.7 acres, literally twice the size that the A's will get at the Tropicana Hotel site. Let's move on here to Chase Field in the desert in Arizona. Obviously also needs a roof because it's hot and you need that need that air conditioning 48,400 seats on 13.35 acres again we're seeing double digits here everywhere uh, closer to 15 than actually 9 this might be the closest we get across major league baseball to a proper size facility that's that's near 9 acres this is the smallest retractable roof stadium footprint i can find of the seven, 11.71 acres is what the Brewers have for their home, American Family Field in Milwaukee. 41,900 seats. So again, significantly more seats, like 12,000 more seats, but a critical 
2.7 more acres. And they really squeezed this one in here. They tried to use the smallest amount of space possible. I mean, look at how in, in center field there, how the edge of the stadium is not much further than the center field fence depth. They really squeezed that one in there in Milwaukee. But again, still a couple more acres than the A's will have available at the Tropicana site. So I know what you're saying. Can you even fit a major league ballpark on nine acres? Well, yes, you can, but you have to do it like in the early 1900s, like 1910 or 12 or 14. Wrigley and Fenway went up like two years apart. Uh, Wrigley Field is on 8.49 acres. So here you go. You can build a major league ballpark on this size site, although it doesn't have a retractable roof. And it doesn't have huge concourses. And I don't think anybody is raving about how spacious and luxurious and comfortable Wrigley Field is. It's historic and they've upgraded it and they've done a bunch of things to it. But they literally have people sitting on rooftops across the street because it's so crammed and it's so uh, it's so well packed in there. I mean, they've they've done a good job. They've done the best they can. Uh, and I hope this stadium never goes away. This is a good ballpark experience. But I don't know it's what you're wanting to bring to Las Vegas in terms of size or space or amenities. 8.49 acres for 41,629 seats. But no roof. You need extra space to put that retractable roof on. It's as simple as that. So it's possible. Uh, other people say, well, how about Fenway? That's even smaller. Actually, it's not. When you look at the entire structure of Fenway Park, which does need all these extra buildings and facilities for kitchens, for offices. I mean, you can't just you can't just say, well, where the seats end is where the ballpark ends. That's not the case. At Fenway Park, they have 37,000, almost 38,000 seats on 10.24 acres. So Fenway Park takes up even more space than Wrigley Field. Again, no roof, and you've got the green monster as, you know, a feature you're almost going to have to have a feature like that in Las Vegas at that site because you're going to have to kind of hack one corner off. It really is going to have to look like that. Okay, how about newer, more modern ballparks? Oracle Park, uh, a.k.a. AT&T Park, SBC Park, Pac Bell Park is how it opened back in 1999. That sits on 11.49 acres. And look, you've got McCovey Cove. Again, you've kind of hacked off that right field corner of the stadium You've done so beautifully, aesthetically. I mean, that's that's exactly what they wanted it to be. But they've used that space so effectively for 41,000 seats. And it still takes up almost three more acres, two and a half more acres than the A's will have in Las Vegas. Again, nobody, we can talk about renderings and scales or, or, or you know hypotheticals. Nobody has shown me that a retractable roof stadium of Vegas quality and of MLB necessity can fit on nine acres. And I don't know that there's an architect for this project yet or details like that. I'm just saying this might be an issue that gets run into in the near future. And also this, I mean, if, if the trade-off is going to be, well, there's more land for the A's to take, how much more will that cost? Because land on the Strip, I've heard, is anywhere from 20 to $40 million dollars per acre. So that's Oracle Park. Great yard fits on 11.49 acres. How about Target Field? Everybody says, oh, it's a, it's a seven or eight acre ballpark. No, that's not true. I literally did the dimensions here. Some of it hangs over. Uh, is that an interstate in a right field? I know there's a big parking garage. Some of it sits over the roadway. But if you literally draw the border, and this is a newer field, Target Field opened in the 2000s, 11.52 acres. 38,000 seats, so only 8,000 more seats, 8,500 more seats. But still, I mean, they really squeeze this one in. It still takes 11 and a half acres. You're kind of seeing a trend here. Okay, so let's get to our final point here of Vegas math. And we talked about construction cost, what the A's are estimating, and their incentives for building this. Remember, um, the ballpark cost initially $1.5 billion, and the incentives about $1.2 billion. Because you take a look at the A's payroll for this season, and as of right now, it's around $60 million. That number on opening day 
was different than it will be on game 162. But as of right now, $60 million is how their payroll looks. A nice round number. But it's about $100 million short of the MLB average. And so money doesn't always buy you wins. But let's say that the A's really need to field a great team for their first 10 years in Las Vegas. I I think it's an easy hypothetical to say that at least to be in that consideration and contention, and even with a great front office and scouting and the ability to find an eye talent like the A's have always been able to do, I think it's easy to understand that they'll find the right players, but how do they keep and retain them over time? Usually... That's with money. So it's a fair assessment to say that in their first 10 years, they would have to spend up to the MLB average, which as of right now is $100 more million dollars per year. And I'm not even including <laughs> inflation by the year 2033. That feels weird to even just say. But in 2033, yeah, it could be more like $200 million more per year to get to the league average instead of where the A's would be at at this trajectory. I digress. But this is simple math. 10 seasons at 100 more million dollars per year, again, not including inflation or even the fact that you might need to spend more than the average. That's a billion dollars right there in the first decade alone just to get to the MLB average payroll. So this is the number and this is the aspect that gets kind of getting lost on people right now as you talk about a ballpark and construction and that cost and incentives. Sure, there's a lot going on there. But I think everybody realizes this team and this project, it cannot be successful and profitable unless the baseball team itself is also successful and profitable. And to make money, you've got to, to a large degree, spend that money. A billion dollars more, let's say, for every decade. So if we're on a 30-year plan here of paying off a stadium... There's an additional three, but probably more like four or five billion dollars of increased payroll, not total payroll, increased payroll just to get to Major League Baseball's team average across the board. So there you go. Some Vegas math. All the numbers, some things that you know, don't always make sense unless you see them all in the same place at the same time. That's why I wanted to show you the cost versus the incentives to build a ballpark. I wanted to show you all the site locations, the acreage, the retractable roof factor, what you can do, what's never been done before. And obviously, like I said, the part that nobody's really considering, if you want to be competitive on uh, as a business, you've got to be competitive on the field. You've got to draw people to want to come to A's games. And whether they're tourists or locals, you want to support a team that's going to do well. There will be a honeymoon period, but you know, after a year or two, you know, how do you compete with Vegas entertainment? Other things on the strip. You've got to field a very competitive baseball team. Uh, that does it for this video. Hey, thumbs up since you watched here all the way to the very end. I really appreciate that. Also, don't forget, subscribe to this channel so that I can see you next time.